Hello and welcome to the chapter 5 video. I feel much better now. I can carry on a conversation without breaking down into fits of coughing. Although every once in a while I still will cough, so bear with me please. I'm going to do two problems this week. The first one is going to be problem number 2 and the second one is going to be problem number 4. And there's reasons behind each. So let's go ahead and do number 2. 2 is very similar to problem number 1, by the way. Um, so we're conducting a, sur a survey was conducted. Uh, percentages, ratings of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So we got the percentages given to us of 43%, 21, 22, 7, and 7. Going to assign numerical values to those qualitative ratings. So in other words, a 5 will now count as 5 points, a 4 will count as 4 points, etc. And we got to find an estimate of the probability distribution of x. And now we need to calculate the expected value of that. Let's go ahead and pull this up. So there are five values. So we're going to call those V. And the probability for each of those Vs was given to us. One, two, three, four, five. And what were those probabilities given? Well, we're going backwards, so I'll go ahead and change my Excel to five, four, three, two, one. Doesn't matter. 43%, 21, 23%, 43, 21, 22, and 7 and 7. So the expected value, the way that I do this, this is, remember it's just the sum abilities. So the probability of a 5 was 43%. The probability of a 4 was 21%, probability of a 3 was 22%, etc. So let me repeat that expected value, just the sum of all the values. So this is equal to the value times its probability. Copy that over. So 2.15 is 5 times 0 0.43, 0 0.84 is 4 times 0 0.21, 0 0.66 is 3 times 0 0.22, etc. And again, remember that the expected value is just the sum, that is adding all these up. Equals the sum of this entire row. 3.86. And this is going to be true for all discrete random variables. Um, sometimes there are shortcuts to calculating the expected values and the variances and the standard deviations, but this method will always work. It's not always going to be helpful, especially if you have 400 possible outcomes. It's not going to be helpful in that case, but it will always work. And it's just the sum of each value times its probability, 3.86. Okay, so that was problem two. Here's problem four. That's the other one I want to look at. Here they actually give, quote, give you the Excel output of the binomial distribution. N is 24, P is 0.01. So let's look at this. X, P of X equals X. So X goes from 0 to 5. And this is just equal to binom dot dist of the number, oh, so you get the little pop-up help, the number is 0, the number of trials given to us is 24, the probability was 0 0.1, and we do not want cumulative. And I got something wrong there. Oh, I forgot a comma. That's a comma. Boom. I'm going to copy and paste that down. These are to four decimal places, so I'll change these to four decimal places. And this is where Connect got these numbers, 0 0.7857, 0 0.7857. 1905, 1905, 0221, 0221, etc. So probability x equals 0 is just 0 0.7857.
probability x is greater than or equal to 1. Well, that's the probability x equals 1 plus the probability x equals 2 plus the probability x equals 3 plus the probability x equals 4 plus the probability x equals 5 plus the probability x equals 6 plus the probability x equals etc. Or, remembering back to a, the previous chapter, <coughs> This is equal to 1 minus the probability of x equals 0. Complementary event. The complement of x greater than or equal to 1 is x less than 1, which actually is just x equals 0. The probability of an event is 1 minus the probability of its complement. So the probability of x is greater than or equal to 1 is 1 minus the probability x equals 0. 0 0.2143. To one four three. Round to four. Okay. Probability x is less than or equal to three. That's probability x equals zero plus probability x equals one plus x probability x equals two plus probability x equals three. Less than or equal to. So I'm going to pop up that Excel again. Less than or equal to three. Just highlighting all of them. And notice that it gives me the sum over here. 0.9999. Probability x is greater than 2 is just 1 minus the probability of its complement. Complement of x greater than or equal to 2 is x less than 2. In this case, that would be the probability, uh, sorry, in this case, the complement would be x equals 1 or 0. 0.7857 minus 0.1905. O two three eight. Suppose that two of the twenty four selected golf balls are found to exceed one point six two ounces. Using the result from D, do you believe the claim is correct? The original claim? This is the probability of observing this reality or something more extreme given the claim is correct. I know we observed two. So this is really a test of the claim itself, given our reality. That's uh, about 2% chance of seeing two or more heavy golf balls, if the claim is true. Very small probability. So using that result, do I believe the claim? No, I don't. The probability of this result is small if the claim is true. Probably this result, if the claim is true, is 0 0.0238. It's pretty darn small. So we have evidence that the claim is false. Again, we can't prove the claim is false, but we do have strong evidence that the claim is false. Because this number, the 0 0.0238, is a small probability. And that's it. So here's what this video was about. First part was showing you how to calculate expected values of discrete random variables. The second was calculating um, binomial probabilities. That show you how we got this table here in the connect. And the third is just determining best way of making these calculations, probability calculations, and most importantly, especially for the second half of the course, most importantly is the interpretation of what this probability of x greater than or equal to 2 actually is. Remember, the theme for the course, let the computer do the calculations, you worry about the interpretations, you worry about what it actually means for this probability to be 0 0.0238. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Bye.